So we're, we're doing a double today. Um, we're going to work on bobs. Um, I've chosen to work on a, kind of a shorter variation of a bob, more, um, we were saying kind of like Louise Brooks kind of-ish. So proper old school flapper bob kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, We've got some wave in here, so we're going to see that wave come to life a little bit. This is the same mannequin I used last week. So we've got a square layer going on here. So I've got, you know, this going on through the interior of the shape. So there's my corner and then there's my flat layer through the top. Flat layer through the top basically means concave, shorter to longer. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to build the bob from the front. We're very used to and we're very conditioned to build the bob in the back first. So what usually happens is we build this graduation in the nape, and then we build the bob over the top of it. So what happens is, if you don't get the nape right, if you don't get the foundation right, then the bob or the house doesn't sit right. And so this becomes a very problematic area. Because whatever you do on one side, you've got to duplicate on the other side. So, as always, I like to kind of change things around and, and find different solutions to these haircuts. And I find that haircuts are just like GPS. You can find several routes to get you home or work or wherever you're going. It's the same thing with haircuts. Haircut is three-dimensional. I can take vertical sections, horizontal sections, diagonal sections, and I'm going to see some form of dimension, some line that's been cut in there. So I can duplicate that many different ways. So I'm gonna start my bob from the front. I'm gonna approach it kind of like a traditional wedge or firefly haircut. If we're familiar with those haircuts, we're going back into the uh, early to mid 70s with those techniques, but the, all they are are classic graduated haircuts. Um, what I'm gonna to choose to do is not cut it so round like a firefly would be. So I'm not going to see my weight descend towards the back. I want it to be pretty level through this. So I'm gonna establish this panel first. I'll do the same on the other side, and then I can start to work into the back and start joining or connecting the dots. So, my first section is just right above the ear, and I'm going to establish the length first. So again, if you're just joining us, I'm working on um, kind of a graduated bob, a uh, little bit on the shorter side. So I'm not going in this kind of French bob territory in here. I'm going to come into more around that earlobe area. So we're going to more kind of lip kind of area with this bob, not so much the chin. So just cutting that flat line, that's what I'm looking for. And that's my guide. So now I need to build the weight. So I take horizontal sections. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull away from what I wanna keep. So I'm gonna build the weight. So when I pull that first section out now, I'm gonna bring number two down into it. I'm gonna use a low elevation, right? So I'm not put, putting it down at zero degrees. I'm not pulling it out at 45, wherever that is. And I'm not pulling it out at 90 degrees. I'm just lifting it above zero. So I don't know the exact number of degrees that's happening there, but all I need to know is that if I pull away from the top, I'm going to make it get heavy. If I lift it, I'm going to bevel that edge. If I pull it down, I'm gonna make that edge flat. It's gonna be like that. So I'm gonna keep the weight within that. What I wanna do is I want to bevel that edge. So that's why I'm using the elevation. It really helps to turn the hair in. If I layer it, it really helps to turn the hair out. So 
So I'm going to use that as a stationary guide now. And bring everything down onto that. So with each section, I'm holding more hair. I'm adding a section to it. So nice, clean, classic graduation. Very Sassoon to me this. This is the kind of ethos of what I, as a hair cutter is, am, is classically trained fundamental techniques. And what I like to do, knowledge destroys fear, I like to make these techniques easier to achieve, to simplify. One of the best pieces of advice I got from Vidal Sassoon, the man himself, was to not embellish. It was to strip away. That's the goal of a teacher. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I'm Kelly. Um, I work with DJ and Katie with Knowledge Stories Fear and I'm gonna be doing a razor bob for you. Um, the way I sectioned out my head here was first finding this drop down into the frontal part of the hair here and then made a circle um, subsection all the way around to like high occipital and then I sectioned out this area around the nape kind of following where like the bottom of the sideburn is. The sectioning that I do here kind of creates a little bit of insurance that when I'm coming around into my bob that I'm going to be compensating for that hairline uh, dip up around the ear here and then drop the nape out and then found just a fringe section. I'm undecided on how we're going to go with the fringe at this point. Um, so this is the stuff that wants to live on the face and I clipped everything else away. I'm going to be combing that down over here. But I just have this out for insurance um, and to see how this plays into the rest of the haircut once we're finished. Um, I'm going to be working with my straight razor here. And the style that I want for this bob is to have a heavier weight line, but kind of clunky chunky. So I'm going to be using a wider stroke with my razor at a lower elevation. I'm gonna be pulling down to create a heavier weight line and then a larger stroke to kind of have a lot of like separation here. I want a lot more fullness, fullness with around the root area. So most of my texturizing is just gonna be working around the perimeter area of the haircut. I'm aiming to have the length of the bob about mid neck here. Now these are the bangs and the layers that were put in before. So this is kind of my clue as to where I want my length for my bob to be. So knowing that as I'm coming around here, just visualizing how short I'm going to need to take that nape area really, really tight in there. I don't want to have a lot of volume as a profile here. So if I did graduation in there, that would give us a lot of volume in the nape. I want this to lay really flat because all of this is going to lay over that, give us a nice heavier line. So I'm just going to be scooping out all of this length down here, knowing that this right there at the ear is going to be my target area. I enjoy using the razor for this kind of technique because it can kind of be a time saver that we can take this all out in kind of one large swoop here, knowing that our hairline is there. I'm going to come in and use low elevation. But I'm going to push back on the hair and see where that bend starts, where, where that movement in the S wave starts in the hair. That's going to be my guide for where I'm going to just melt away the length and all of that um, bulkiness down here in this nape area. So seeing where that is, and then I'm just going to lay the flat of my blade, holding tight tension with my fingers, and continue to just let this melt away on its own till that falls into the hairline. So that's no manipulation with the hair. And so now we know that that hair is gonna lay nice and tucked in and flat on the back. So I'm gonna do this again. I'm also looking to see how the hair is clumping together as I'm going with this. Not wanting to manipulate the roots too much now that I have that kind of comb in, combed into place. So just kind of rake that in. I'm gonna check where that bend is again so I can see where it's starting to split right there. 
tight tension and then flat of the blade coming in to let that kind of melt away into the hairline. Same thing here. Um, and also knowing that, um, you know, I chose this tool because I know what kind of finish that I want to be getting out of this haircut. I want this to be, um, you know, kind of lived in and broken and really, really soft on the ends. Um, you know, if a client brought in a photo, something a little bit more geometric and stronger lines, then I would definitely go and pick up my scissors. But for this look that I'm wanting, clunkier, chunkier, kind of like you did it at home, but it's much better. Hmm. <laughs> right here, okay, and then tight tension and pulling that straight down, flat of the blade until the hair just melts away into the hairline. So I've just put in the other side, same exact process. Now, anytime you work from the front, you balance by using the mirror. You can do a little measuring, you know what I mean? With your comb and that. So let's cross check. Let's have a look at the graduation that's already been created in there. Keep in mind, I've also got a layer going on in there. So that top part is a little bit layered too. Or is it? Oh, I think I've managed to uh, create graduation all the way through. Ah, a little bit there. But let's look at the buildup of weight. There we go. Nice, clean buildup of weight. So the degree of this angle that we're seeing right now, the severity of this, this part of it, that's created by how much I elevate the hair, how much I pull the hair down. So if I pull down into my previous section and move through this haircut, then I'm going to create a much flatter, leaner graduation. The lower I pull, I'm gonna create heavier. See what it is, it's that corner that you see, and it's where that corner is going to live on the side of the head here. Check the other side and then I can move into the back area. So we just got back from Connecticut and had a great uh, hands-on class, monstrous class, about 35 people in that one. It was really good, good energy. You see that nice clean buildup. Now, when you look at that, what you'll notice is that there's a slight bevel to it. And that's because I've used horizontal sections. I've used elevation to create that buildup of weight. If I cut vertically, I'm inclined to cut that flatter. So I take that swollenness, that bevel away if I cut it more vertical. Remember haircutting is a distribution of weight. So there's a big side and there's a skinny side because that's what weight does to us. It makes us bigger, grander, or it makes us leaner, smaller. So with graduation, I have the option of creating a bigger graduation or I can create a leaner graduation, just like I can do the same thing within layers. You've heard of convex, you've heard of concave, they just mean skinny or big, big or skinny. So now that's done, now I can start to bring this haircut into the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to literally take that first section in the front again. And I'm going to extend that into the back. All 
All right, so I've released this section on the side, and what I'm going to be doing now is following that line that we had, our clue right here. So really, the, these next two sections, I'm just going to be bringing them down into elevation, uh, zero elevation, excuse me. Um, I'm really saturating the hair, too, with water to make sure that I'm getting all of that to, to lay nice and flat and that we have an even moisture amount throughout the whole thing. I don't want one side to be drier as I'm cutting because that spring back and that recoil um, could really mess up your haircut moving forward as we do get more stretch when the hair is wetter. So I want to make sure that I have the same amount of wetness on both sides moving around. So bringing this down to zero elevation, I'm going to start right over the ear now to put in my line. Knowing that that's our problem area and that's the one that we have to combat the most in bobs, I like to start there when I'm putting in that line in the front. That way it's easier moving forward because you've already done your big hurdle. Um, that's going to be a truer representation of where that line is going to sit. So letting this into natural fall here, and like I said, I want it to be kind of clunkier and chunkier so I can see my guide underneath, visualizing here. I'm just gonna pinch this hair and then pull it tighter tension. I'm gonna bring this in behind and just the same way that I melted the hair away in that nape area, that's what I'm doing here and letting the blade kind of melt through that section of the hair. You can see these tendrils kind of clumping together, which is great. I don't want to go in and rake it too much because I do want to have that feel to it. So kind of taking my guide, same sort of thing, seeing where this recoils up, matching them up, melting that away from behind. So I'm going to do that all the way around and then do the same on the other side and match up those, those pieces. Now I'm not combing this forward here because then our line would go up. I want this to kind of come back behind the cheekbone and into this, really loose. Now there's so much fundamental um, techniques that I'm using here, but the tool of choice with the razor to kind of give it that really nice broken edge is just personal choice. You could do this with a scissor, bring this down, tap over the ear and deep point cuts into there if you wanted to achieve this type of look with a scissor, but I really like the, uh, the look with the razor. Now this section right here in the front, because we're grabbing from the sideburn as well, this hairline's coming down, so we have more density in this um, little coil here. So what I'm gonna do is just a little bit of weight removal before I put my line in. I can see how thick this is. So just coming in and swooping out a big section so that now I have a little bit more control and gripping this section, clumping that together, checking my length and then coming in from behind and letting that hair melt away with the blade. These that's, little, that's a bob. That's a bob. Mm -hmm. Cute. So then just following that around into the back with that same technique. All right, so I, I got that sectioned away. That's probably the hardest part of the haircut. So I've got that first section through the front and then what I've done is I've extended that first section into the back, to the center back here. The nape's pulled and pinned away. I'm gonna do that last. The idea is to cut the bob first and then do the nape afterwards. So same elevation as before. So looking at the angle of this line as I move it into the back. So if I want it to come up, then obviously I'm going to change that angle of my fingers as I work through that. I'm going to try to keep this level. So now looking at the, the geometry of what I've just created, where that and that falls, you see how it's level now. So that I'm happy with. So all I'm going to do now is continue in the same manner I did before, pulling down onto that same guide 
at that same elevation. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating the bob first. I'm establishing my weight line. And then I can do the nape afterwards. The whole idea is to work smarter, not harder, just to make it easier on yourself. I find that starting from the back, although it's a great way of doing it, it's not the easiest way of doing it. The challenge is trying to figure out what to do down here so that the bob ends there. Whereas I can just put that in first, create the bob first, and then it's going to give me the angle to take the nape in. I don't have to guess to, at the beginning so again, working a little bit on the smaller side there. Kelly, we have a question. I love questions. Um, someone asked if you razor on the top of that section, will uh -huh. it give you a different cut? Like what's the reason for razoring underneath? Sure, yeah, good question. Um, so I choose to come in from behind here and then scoop in because the place that your blade touches, the, touches first is the shortest part of that section. So if I was to come in on the top here and razor this way, we'd be layering that a little bit. So this is actually creating a bit of an undercut and a bevel so that you can see how that just flips under on itself every time because coming in from behind, we're creating just a tiny little bevel on those edges. Um, so now moving forward into this next section, I just took that little subsection down. I'm combing this, like I said, back behind the ear and to see where that hair is going to be sitting, right? So this is going to be sitting here. Now, if I was to comb it this way, and this is a huge mistake, right? Comb this straight down following that line, as opposed to listening to what the hair wants to do and following that hairline by flipping that back and over the ear, we could see exactly what we were going to want to be taking off here with that with that bob to give it that really heavy line around the bottom there. So once I have it combed into place, kind of raked into place, following where this hair wants to fall, there's nothing like weird going on up here, then I'm just gonna kind of take this and pinch and like melt it away. It's really, I really enjoy doing this type of cutting, especially with the razor. I feel like it, it um, I'm really, can sketch a shape into place and um, it makes it more meditative, I guess, for me. Like it's a, it's a rhythm almost that I can fall into because I gave myself the blueprint and the grid work with the sectioning and having a clear vision of what I want. Now it's just kind of putting the pieces into place and choosing the right tool to accomplish the look that, that I'm going for. Cute. So then now I'm going to match it over to the other side. Just do it again. I've just finished that bit. And uh, before I go on to section the other side out, you can see now I've created the bob over the nape area. I mean, technically, guys, this is the jellyfish haircut, if you want it to be. So now all I'm going to do is... I'll section away the other side, exactly the same process, and then I'll come back to you when I'm doing it. All right, so now we're going on this side here. So coming this down to natural fall. Should just look coming off the roots really, really easily here, everything combed into place. Now I'm gonna split this section a little bit here because this is way too dense for my razor to get through. So I wanna be able to hit it all in one go and not feeling like I'm like really chomping away at it with the razor. Kind of the same where you would take a big section with the scissors and the, the scissor would kind of bend the section as opposed to actually cutting into it. So I'm gonna split this at the round of the head here. So using my comb to see where that Head is turning upwards here. I'm just gonna split that down. Put that out of the way. So all of this hair here should be falling straight down onto the straight down to the floor, scooping this area back, really kind of getting it this into place and taking a minute to kind of assess 
where my density is and how the hair is kind of clumping together. And then we're gonna take that clue from the fringe here to give us our guide for this side too. So it'd be right over there, the ear there. This is that piece that we were using from the other side. And I feel like with this freeform cutting, kind of more etching it in with the razor and loose hand, giving yourself a clue and using all the tools that you have, right? Like using the comb to measure the head and using a guide from the other side to match it up. Everything that you can do to be able to kind of double check yourself as you're going through the haircut will save you time in the chair and stress in your life. Yeah, set yourself up to succeed, not to fail. Exactly, right? yeah. Yeah, taking those moments to kind of just, okay, what, what, what am I going for, right? Like sometimes just measuring with your comb on one side, right? Okay, this is that many to this point, and then take it to the other side and see if it matches up. That way, you know moving forward after that, you're not guessing, because that's the worst. We don't need to do that anymore. Slowly with the center of the blade here, just kind of chipping that away. Um, you can, you see too, my, the head is upright. I want this to sit upright. I'm not bending it over one side or the other. This is where the bob is going to be sitting on the head. So having them sit upright is really important for something like this. Cut it where it lives. Okay, so this tendril here. So as you can see now, have matched those two up. So side A, side B, all the way through. I've got my weight line. So now I can start to, again, build that bob. So all it is is the same process. It's literally like cutting the graduated bob backwards. Starting here, ending there. Yes, we can do it the other way, but slightly difficult. This kind of simplifies because you achieve the length you want. I mean, what a, what a, what a game changer for me when, when I learned that for me to start the bob in the front because it, there's so many rules that I think I was taught along the way that you just kind of fall into it, not really understanding why. Exactly. To me, it's the what if. You know, what if I start from here? What's it going to do? And that's kind of what I love to explain in, in our classes is, what if we did it this way? What if we did it that way? All those questions that you guys have had since you were in hair school, but what if I did this? What if I stood over here and did it? You know, I've had the, you know, very lucky, fortunate career to experiment with a lot of stuff. I've been in the right place to really hone in on the craft of hair cutting and see what does what. And in my own way, because there's a lot of us out there that know what we're doing, I've got my own way of kind of interpreting it. So we've got a class coming up this weekend. I'm going to be back on the East Coast in the New England area. I will be in Boston and New Hampshire. New Hampshire's sold out, Boston's got a few places left, and then the weekend after I'm going to be in Charlotte, North Carolina, October 15th and 16th. It's two amazing events, uh, both going to be um, Knowledge Destroys Fear, and um, going to be working with Evo, so I'll be using Evo products and uh, talking about the wonderful world of Evo, and uh, obviously my amazing world with Knowledge Destroys Fear, and... Uh, spreading the uh the gospel of hair <laughs> <laughs> scary thank you so that's what we'll be doing this weekend or i'll be there and um, if you're interested in coming to boston or north Car carolina just follow the link tree link in my bio and you'll be able to see where i'm at what i'm doing and all the classes that we've got coming up and you can find more information and you can book your space in those classes. Um, great opportunity to see me on the East Coast for this year. 
Uh, these will be the last East Coast classes of the year. Oh my God. Yeah, another year's there, isn't it, almost? We also have a class in Los Angeles. Don't have a fly for that one yet. I'll put one up next week. Uh, that's November 13th in LA. Um, so again, another opportunity here on the West Coast to come and see and take part in the Knowledge Destroy Sphere class. Uh, my classes are pretty famous now. They're 100% hands-on. We go through the what, why, how, and when, and what if of haircutting. And we do that in a hands-on practical manner. So we're actually just cutting hair all day together and going through the intricacies of what does what and why it's doing that and how we can make it easier on ourselves. So again, follow the link in my bio to sign up for those classes. So this last bit, we have to be a bit careful here because we're dealing with hair that's literally living on a horizontal landscape and then falling on the vertical part of the head shape. So if I just keep doing this from roots to ends while I cut the back, then I'm moving hair that probably sits over here or sits over here. So I put it into place to begin with and then I go to the round of the head and then I comb the hair and lift it. So it doesn't interfere with the direction of the roots very important when we're working those crown sections. You know, a lot of people tend to wait till the hair is dry. I'll just work with the natural flow of the hair. Put it in where it's going to live. I don't want to blow dry this artificially, then join the, the crown in, and then the client goes home, blow dries it her own unique way, right? And then that crown's all jumping and swinging all over the place. I'd rather do it now. Make sure it's in there with this hair in this state. It has to look good when you're not there. So it kind of has to look good when it's wet. You know, we're cutting with intent. Okay, so this is that section that we haven't cut anything on. It's been our key guide for each side. I'm just clipping this away because now I'm moving into this circular section here on the crown. Um, so, by bringing everything down into that zero elevation here, we actually created this shape, right? Moving this down, bringing that down into zero elevation. So I'm just gonna marry that into the layers here and bring that around. So I'm gonna be taking diagonal back sections pulling that on top of it, onto it, and seeing my guide from underneath, and I'm gonna be coming in with my razor this way. So now let me get into a better body position here because I could feel myself kind of leaning into it oddly. If it feels weird in the body, just take a minute and adjust. Make sure that I'm raking this into the proper position, and then I'm gonna be marrying these two together here by following that guide. Now I don't want to lift the hair up as I'm coming through and marrying this in. I'm not lifting, I'm just bringing this onto the top of it. Still coming in from underneath and slicing those away. Okay, same sort of thing. I'm not taking out too much um, density here because we are a little bit finer um, as far as density wise, because we do want this clunkier, chunkier weight line here where it's more broken down here, like I said. So just following that, using a bigger stroke with my, um, my razor to kind of get it to grip together, almost like um, Velcro or, um, yeah. yeah, I think Velcro, Velcro right? yeah. Someone said, uh, you're not using a feather razor? I am using the, um, the feather plier unguarded razor. They come and um, you can get the handle and then that you buy the pack of razors. I put a new blade on for every client or every haircut. Um, that ensures that my tools are super, super sharp as I'm going in here. Um, I think you can get these on hairbrained. Hair um, I think the handles are around like 130. 130, yeah. And then I just have a pack um, 
a subscription from Amazon that sends me the blades like every two weeks or something like that. So my razor is actually sharper than most of my scissors. But could you use one oh, of those could you use? stick feather razors? Yeah, absolutely. Like That's I said, what I would use. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the, whatever makes you feel most comfortable and whatever you feel like is going to give you that look that you're trying to achieve. This haircut, you can use a feather razor. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to bash anybody for using whatever tool they want. Um, this is just the one that I chose today. We have so many available, like, suggestions or tools and, and things that you can use. It's, I, I find it um, hard to limit myself because of... Um, you know, oh, I'm just this or I'm just that as a hairdresser. Like, there isn't one, you know, the rules can be broken as long as you follow the fundamentals of, of haircutting. You need to grab one of these sections, Kate. Yeah. So, as you can see, guys, I've started to take that nape in. So, what I'm doing is I'm working from this back corner hairline and working towards the center back. We'll just cross over a little bit as it's doing. And what I've used is, see, I already have the angle there for my graduation. So all I'm doing is I'm taking that angle and I'm now just projecting down into the nape. So working down into a shorter length towards the hairline. I could do what I want with this nape hairline. I could have left this last section out for softness around the edge if I wanted to, or again, I could take it in. I could layer this if I want, so we could have that graduation and then it could turn into that kind of concave layer if I want. Uh, the only options are, are there for you, but now you start to see what's happening. It's starting to play into that really nice, cute little graduated bob shape. So I'll continue that, and then I'm gonna come through this side and do the exact same thing. So again, just rearranging how we uh, go about something. We'll end up at the same destination, but we decided to go a different way there. That's what's amazing about hair cutting. It's very, um, you know, it makes it fun. There's a lot of options to play with. Just like Kelly was saying, a lot of options with tools, a lot of options with how you would go about that haircut. And I think that's what makes it really awesome right now is being able to, uh, you know, learn all these different things. I'm going to drop the, the head down now because this is a different position for me. I'm not working with my fingertips pointed up, coming from the top with the scissors. I'm now going to point my fingers in and come from the underneath with the scissors. So there we see the angle. Just getting in there and doing it. It's not our most favored position, this apparently throughout the industry, I've noticed. Uh, but it actually makes this part much easier by me holding the hair that way. And I'm actually able to come in there quite easy. Now, I am working on a mannequin. There's no shoulders, so it does change the game a little bit. But it's really how you hold your scissor, or your shear, whatever you want to call them. If I throw my, th no, my thumb and put it all the way through, then it's very difficult for me to find these angles. I have to kind of like get down here to do that graduation. 
So the thumb really, when you're holding scissors, guys, don't put it through. I keep seeing that. It's like, all the way in. yeah, pop it right there. So it's right on the edge. See, now watch what happens with the scissors. I can move it around and I can cut all these different angles without moving my wrist. If you hold the scissors correctly, you won't damage your wrist. And you can cut hair better. Exactly. You can cut hair better. Listen to Katie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. And for longer. <laughs> and for longer. Yeah. So again, there's the angle. Just taking that in, following that guideline. And see how my wrist is not being twisted. It's staying level. That's flat. So I can move that scissor around to get to the right thing. I can move the, this finger out and in as well, trying to get that scissor to fit into this angle. If you hold your scissors one way, you're only going to be able to cut hair one way. And I think with any instrument, we we take the basics and we start bending it, don't we? You know what I mean? Like if you're going to learn to play guitar, you're going to learn the basics, then you're going to go and do other things with it. That's like, you know, this yeah, is an instrument shred, too. For sure. <laughs> go off. The shred. The shred, yeah. Slayer style. Slayer. Doing some slayers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I hope everybody's enjoying this. It's nice to be back doing these uh, Kadia flies. We've had a busy year. It is nice to be back. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, Kelly. I know. Um, so yeah. this is kind of my finished look. I'm going to do some styling on it. Um, I'm excited to really kind of get my hands into some uh, of these Evo products. I've been using it on my clients for a couple of what, like a month now, maybe? Yeah, mm -hmm. Full time for a month. So I'm really gotten, starting to get a handle of what I'm, you know, what these products can do for me and how we can really work with them to create a look. So what I'm, I want to do like more of a diffuse kind of soft look. We can, let's do a spin here. Now I haven't touched this fringe because I'm kind of liking this little bit of a disconnect, having this little bit of a moment of like a little bit longer piece here. I want to wait until it's dry before I decide if I want to blend it, but I think it's giving it a little bit of edge. Um, so I like that longer piece there. Also, if it was a person, being able to go and tuck this behind the ear here so that's out of the face and it's falling just right into that guide of that bob that we had created, I think um, is a cool benefit to that. So I'm going to rake in some um, liquid rollers from Evo, which is the curling balm. I'm gonna kind of rake it out and set it into place. And then as I'm diffusing it, I'm gonna lightly mist it with the Salty Dog. Um, that, the alcohol in the Salty Dog sea salt spray is gonna help me dry the hair faster and encourage a little bit of lift. So I'm gonna put some products in and get that set. Um, I will probably diffuse it and then I can post some finishing photos of it on my Instagram um, and then you can Check it out. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. I will also be doing a uh, class up in San Francisco on November 26th. So that'll be an all-day hands-on cutting class as well. Um, Ta-da! Yeah. Hands-on razor. Hands-on razor. Field trip. Bay hey, area. <laughs> Cute, so like a clunky, chunky, nice solid line down the bottom. I think look has been achieved. Ding. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome back, Kelly. Thank you. Um, we had a question. Can you do a video on how to properly hold your scissors? How to hold them different ways? Sure, yeah, I can do that. A little uh, mini tutorial. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the, again, this is kind of how I go about things and that, you know. Everybody's different. Everyone's got different hands. You know what I mean? <laughs> big, <laughs> big, big hands, small hands, you know what I mean? So I just do this to kind of help me, myself, how I can get into these certain areas. Um, but, yeah, I'll definitely do that for you guys. That sounds like a fun one to do. I'm just coming through from the front into the back now, diagonal back sections, and I'm just cross-checking through all this graduation and further solidifying 
the shape of the haircut. This is like neutralizing a perm. You're really just setting that haircut in. Um, most people won't do this, either because they've not been shown this before or just probably think it's a waste of time. It's really not a waste of time. This is the difference of your shape lasting a long time and not. So really just coming back through and just checking through. My graduation and I'll do this on both sides. And again, it's just solidifying the shape. It's going to make my blow dry much easier. Now I've uh, used a little bit of day of grace by Evo. Um, a, it's a working product. And it's a really good kind of primer to use on the hair before you start styling and you start blow drying and that. It's also UV protectant and all that kind of good stuff. So it's really great for the hair. So it won't get sunburnt. You won't get sunburnt, exactly. <laughs> and obviously you're spraying it on the scalp too. So it's really helping that. I feel like it evens out the porosity too, right? Gives you more yeah. of an even canvas to work yeah. on. Especially, you know, with everyone's heavy all over the place nowadays and all the different chemicals being used. So now I'll come through this side, front to back, and, and cross-check through this way. Do you have any plans of coming to India? Oh, I'd love to come to India. That's kind of been a goal of mine to come to India. My daughter is half Indian, so we would love to come and check out... India. I'd love to cut hair in India. Can me and Kelly come and eat food? Yeah. We'll do a team thing. Yeah. I have a lot of uh, people from India following me, so thank you very much for doing that. So again, coming through and just cleaning through what we've got. And Paris. Yeah. Paris. Paris. I, I think I'll probably be in Europe next year for sure. Um, so keep your eyes out for um, I've been working on cities a in, bit of French. in Europe. <laughs> yeah, my goal next year is to come to the UK and uh, teach a class there. Someone said, and Morocco. Oh, that would be amazing, yeah. Morocco. That'd be cool. Yeah. I hope uh, everybody's okay in Morocco after the uh, earthquake. Uh, Kelly, how can they sign up for your San Francisco class? Um, we will get information. Um, or I'll, get... Put, I'll put a link up on my uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be an option. We just announced it, so yeah, we'll, we have just... it, we'll have it for sale by tomorrow. Um, it'll be on our website. Um, and they, uh, we'll put the link on both of our social medias for you. Oh, really? But yeah, cool. And you're going to be at, uh, is it Ginger Rubio? Ginger Rubio. Yeah, which is where, when you lived in the Bay, that's where you were working, right? Uh, yeah, my home away from home, back in, um, back where I started, in the Mission District of San Francisco. Cool. Fun, fun fact, I used to live in San Francisco. I worked for Vidal Sassoon for six months as a stylist uh, before I became a Vidal Sassoon teacher in the mid-90s, 97 actually. Love that area. Are you going to Vancouver, Canada? Oh, uh, I'm sure I'll be in Canada next year, for sure. rolled this back a little bit so that we can get a bit of that like 90s roll back in the in the fringe area with that disconnected piece and what I did was a I call it the rake and shake technique so I kind of take a big section of hair let me just resaturate so I could show you one piece kind of go through and like really place it so using my fingers and creating kind of like wide gaps in between almost like a wide tooth comb and then pinching my fingers together and smoothing that product through to close that cuticle layer Focusing mostly on the roots to make sure that there's no frizz down here and then I'm going to come in Right on top to kind of break that up and then just lightly 
loosen that up so that natural wave can come through. Pinching the ends a little bit with my fingers here as I come down. And then I'm gonna start um, with a hovering technique with the, with the um, diffuser. And then as um, I get probably about 50% dry, almost 100% dry at the roots is where I'm gonna be focusing first. Then I'm gonna lightly mist it with the Salty Dog Sea Salt Spray to help encourage some of that dryness. Just so you, the hovering technique is where Kelly blow dries it and we hover around it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch Everybody it. Everybody loves a hoverer. <laughs> Um, someone asked about New York classes. Yeah, I mean, uh, keep an eye on, on my uh, Knowledge Destroys Fear page and my personal page, and you'll see all the dates of where I'm going to be. Um, we're, we're kind of fully booked for this year. Like I said, my last East Coast class is going to be... Boston. And Charlotte. So, Boston this coming Monday, Charlotte the weekend after. Um, and then I have a class in Los Angeles in November, uh, and then we're into the holidays. So I don't really travel in December, and uh, then I'll be back at it in uh, January. I'll be in Australia, and um, probably the next kind of classes will be February time. But yeah, just keep your eye on my stuff, and you'll see where I'm going to be. And um, one of the things I was probably going to do here is... I was going to do a fringe. Should I do a fringe? Do you want to do a fringe? What do the people think? Bangs or no bangs? Bangs or no bangs, guys. Do I keep it super traditional, no bangs? Or go with the... Let's see. I like the framing, because that's both it's hitting really nicely. Yeah, I like think I'm going to keep as is. I'm going to go with that, like, 90s. That's good, because no one said it's a, it's a cross between... <laughs> 30s flapper and 90s. We just need a little choker now. Totally. Right? And then we've got this. And I mean, she already got the skinny eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> did, did Natalie Portman have a little fringe in that haircut? Yeah. She did, mm -hmm. right? Oh, with the... Yeah, um, yeah, yeah it was... The professional, it, right? Teeny, teeny tiny yeah. things. But it definitely had this, didn't it? Too? Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you want to do more 20s, it would be a hard side part, right? With that, with yeah. the finger wave. Yeah. You should finger we'll wave. definitely want me finger waving, Katie, all right? <laughs> <laughs> hair cutter, not hair stylist. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and start to blow dry this and finish it off and that. Um, thank you so much for joining us today.